And now, your host, Karen Hannan. Thanks for joining me here on Artbeat. Well, today I'm going to do something I don't normally do, which is dedicate an entire show to one particular artist. And in this case, it's Sean Davey, who's recognized as one of Ireland's leading composers of music that combines popular appeal with genuine cultural significance. Sean is joining me all the way from Ireland. And first of all, Sean, thank you for taking the time today. You're more than welcome, Karen. It's nice to talk to you. So let's talk about you, first of all, in terms of how you got into music. Was your family a musical family, for example? No, well, my father was, um, he, well, he was in the Navy during the war, and then he worked in a bank. Uh, I think sadly reluctantly, but he did it just because people looked for security in those days. And uh, so um, uh, the, 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 I had a great aunt who I was told had been a great pianist in her day, and she used to come every so often and play the piano. Um, and then I believe that there was a, a great grandfather who sang madrigals. But apart from that, there was nobody, <laughs> there was nobody sort of blazing the trail in our family. I had to, I, I did, I, I, you know, I was very, very supported by my, my parents to, to do anything artistic. Extraordinary. I had great support from them, everything I did. So uh, they were a big help. So, Sean, can you remember a time when you decided that you wanted to make a living in music, or did you just kind of fall into it? Well, um, well, well, making making a living from music is isn't isn't that easy. I mean, you, you uh, and uh, the time I, I decided I wanted to do it, it was I'd been to university for uh, I did, I did a, uh, ended up doing a master's degree in the history of art. So I was trained to uh, trained art historian, and I'd done two years teaching kids in uh, in the College of Art and then uh, in, in my old university and. Um, at the same time, surreptitiously writing songs and going to London and trying to get a, a record deals, and it was very—I mean, I was very duplicitous at, uh, at that. I, I really, actually, wanted to write songs or write music. I didn't want to teach, and eventually, um, I got a few jobs. Um, uh, we, I did make a record in London, which was quite a, an interesting, formative experience. Not a great record, but a very good experience, and. Um, and, and eventually did manage to figure, figure out a way of how to do some music in Dublin uh, and, make, and get paid for it and raise a family on it. Now, it's, it's very interesting, Sean, that you have ended up as, as really a great orchestral composer, amongst other things, interweaving wonderful traditional Irish instruments, but you had relatively little formal training in music. Was that something that was, you know, helpful or in some ways in sort of being freeing, or was it difficult? Good question. Um, it's both, isn't it? Because on the one hand, it gave me a, a great af affinity with uh, traditional folk musicians who don't read music, uh, but but who sing in, and perform intuitively. Um, and um, uh, I suppose on, on the other on the other hand, it it uh, uh, left me rather vulnerable <laughs> because because I loved the sound of an orchestra, and I always my father used to take me to concerts of you know, the symphony orchestra in Dublin playing, and I adored it. I, I adored what the, the, I adored it as a mode of expression and as a as a way of painting pictures and and you know as a a great great art form. And uh, and in due course, I aspired to try and imitate some of the wonderful music that I'd heard. Let's talk about some of the pieces. I, I have a half a dozen CDs here with uh, with music that ranges from the great orchestral to beautiful Irish folk songs. So let's talk, though, about one that's near and dear to my heart because my son's name is Brendan, The Brendan Voyage, <laughs> which I think was your first concert work. Talk about that for a minute, would you? Well, um, the, 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 the method by which I kept my family fed and a roof over our heads was initially... Uh, uh, um, after coming back from London, having made a, um, a, a record, um, the, the only way I could get food on the table was by writing music for commercials. So I did hundreds and hundreds, literally, of, of radio and television commercials, music for, 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 for that medium. And uh, after three or four years, five years maybe, I, I realized that, you know, that one's shelf life is very limited in that area. And anyway, they were only very, very short pieces of music. I wanted to write something much bigger and much more ambitious, and and I wanted to address this longing of my. I had to uh, learn how to write for an orchestra, and also to marry with that um, 
the, the, one of the sounds and instruments that I've developed a huge passion for, which is the Irish pipes, the Irland pipes, the pipes that are played by um, powering bellows under your elbow. And, and the Brendan Boys came about because I wanted so much to create an alternative route for myself away from commercials and short pieces of music and into the world of the orchestra and the world of the Ewan Pipes. And of course the, the Brendan voyage is essentially a, a, a true story about the, the, the voyage of Tim Severin who tried to reproduce the actual voyage that was you know, um, alleged to have been taken by Brendan. So t can you yeah. tell us the story just briefly? Well, Tim is a, um, uh, a very unusual form of um, academic. He also had a, great, a very strong practical and adventurous streak. And he tried to put to the test the, the possibility that Brendan had built in the 6th century a boat made of uh, leather hide uh, and uh, really a giant coach. Uh, lots of people know what the, 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 the native skin boat that we have here um, Often, often referred to as a canoe. Tim Seven reconstructed one and uh, sailed it across the Atlantic uh, via Iceland, via Labrador. He, on the, in, in the course of it, he encountered incredibly strong gales in, off Labrador and off Greenland. And the boat nearly sank, but it didn't because they were, whenever it were, eventually was hauled in pack ice, they were able to literally sew on a, um, a leather patch to to uh, repair the hole, and, and they did get across all the way to Newfoundland. Um, and and uh, at, at one point, um, I tried to um, evoke or use the pipes and the orchestra to evoke a whole succession of gigantic Atlantic rollers with the, with the ship nearly being swamped, and, um, uh, and that piece is called The Gale. Right. We're actually going to play a little bit of that, and the piper, of course, is Liam O'Neill, I was trying to give you a nice intro into the piece. Right, and you gave me a perfect one. So Piper Liam O'Flynn, of course, um, and we'll talk about yeah. him in just a minute, but let's hear a bit of the gale, first of all. Sure. Pipes of Liam O'Flynn, and of course, uh, my guest being Sean Davy. Uh, can you talk a little bit about Liam? Because uh, he's known, I think, very, he's l known worldwide, partly for his participation with Planksty, but also in his own right. So tell us your connection with him, Sean. Um, I used to live in a flat above his flat, and uh, in the days just before Planksty was formed, and I got to know him then. Um, but uh, Planksty was a huge influence on me. It was a, uh, uh, a group of four very special musicians, including singer Christy Moore. Uh, Liam O'Flynn was one of them. Um, and I think in many ways they were the, the first people to really orchestrate um, Irish music or Irish tunes, Irish songs. Uh, the Chiefsons had done it to some extent um, and did, did so again. But it was really Planksty that, that I... I wanted to be one of Planksty, uh, but, but I couldn't because I wasn't a traditional musician. But later I, I got this chance to work with Liam. And, uh, uh, of course, there are so many opportunities one, one gets in one's life because of other people and other people actually agreeing to participate in something. If Liam hadn't agreed to participate in this and play the pipes and um, bear with me as I tried to work through the, 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 you know, the experience of writing for an orchestra and writing for his pipes, um, it, it, wouldn't have, it would never have been done. So Liam is a man of, of great courage and patience, um, uh, incredible integrity, um, and uh, in more recent years he's um, performed in concert with our great poet Seamus Heaney, um, a series of concerts called The, the, the Piper and the Poet. 
So moving on from, from the voyage of the Brendan, what was coming next for you? I mean, presumably you considered the Brendan voyage to be a great success, and it was received very well. So what came next? Well, well you know, there are some times when you, you write something and you, you expect it there to be actually a great success, but it, it, there wasn't um, a, a great success really with the, with the Brendan voyage. Um, the, the, I mean, it got one or two nice reviews in the paper, um, but it... It, it struggled to make make money. I mean, I suppose the big triumph was that it was actually recorded by by Tyra Records in the first place. Um, the fact that I'd written a piece that was there to be performed live, that that penny didn't really drop for a while. Those people who who um, actually put it on live were uh, were the um, Breton Festival in Lorient, the Lorient Inter- Intercelltic Festival. So it went on there in 1982 and um, was then performed in Dublin a year later. Um, and then subsequently, yes, it was performed quite a lot by our uh, concert orchestra and then more recently by our symphony orchestra. Um, uh, and so, so it's done well as a live, a live concert piece, um, but it's really sort of local success. It's, it hasn't been performed. It's been performed once in, in America on Staten Island, um, once in Quebec, I think once in Toronto, um, and that's it. It, it hasn't it hasn't really translated to a, a worldwide concert work. I think partly because um, uh, you know with, with with orchestras they they have their own orchestral repertoire, and if you ask ask an orchestra as this piece does to accompany a musician who many orchestral players with a um, with a very high level of training might well regarded as their inferior, it's, it goes against the grain, and I think that might be, you know, might have been a problem the odd time. My guest is Sean Davey, Irish composer, and we were listening to a piece from the Brendan Voyage. Sean has a great body of work, and we're going to be talking about it and hearing some more in just a moment. But stay with us, we will be right